I was editing some video last week uh, where I was parting off some material using this parting tool taking a fairly heavy cut of some stainless steel and I noticed that the parting tool actually twisted like that not as much as that but it did move once it does that it means that the tip of the tool goes below centre height that's when you get a dig in that's when you start snapping parting tools this parting tool originally when I bought it was designed to fit into a tool holder like that which goes onto the tool post like that um, the problem I had with it, it was on my box fad lathe that it was sticking out a long way from the centre end of the tool post and I was getting flex so I modified it machine the dovetail in there to fit on the tool post on your box fad lathe and it was a much better fit than that it's a real sloppy fit plus it's quite a short dovetail so it's not getting a secure hold so what I thought I would do because I use it on here all the time now is make a piece of steel to go underneath there so when the tool gets dropped on it'll drop down solid against the compound slide and there's no way it can tilt there's some 6mm holes already down through there, I'll be able to pick those up so it's simply a case of setting the tool up to be dead on centre height measure the distance under there and make a piece of steel or machine a piece of steel to bolt onto that and it'll be a simple case of dropping it on it'll, it'll stop on centre height, lock it up, can't move and away we go so first thing, get this tool set dead on centre height the first thing I'm going to do is eyeball the centre height that's a 300 so lock, slip gauge that doesn't look too bad, I'll take the cut and see how near it is Right, that's it's actually not bad. Okay, so that's leaving that's leaving no pip at all. So a three hundred thousand piece of there is gonna work out perfect. I mean this is brass, it's not like not like part of steel off of it. Right, and that's like the proverbial knife through butter. No pip at all, so it's dead on centre height, that's good. It didn't matter what height this finished off had because I've got a set of snip gauges and you can stack them together to get any size you want but pound three of an inch, three hundred thou is what I need on the bottom of there I found a piece of a nice flat bar that will do the job it's too thick obviously, fading a bit the right thickness would be a miracle miracles have happened. What I want to do first is square the two ends up and set up on it two parallels. Bastard. I've been gonna fix this hammer. Look at it. I've been gonna fix that hammer for months.
You just use an oil skewer just to remove any burrs, imperfections in the table. You basically do this every now and then. Just take any little high spots, any little dings of it. This is a nice flat oil stone, and this is the only thing it's ever used for. This table's in decent condition, there's one or two witness marks on it. Witness marks, that's where some clumsy bastards marked it. They were on when I bought the machine. I think I did one. The rest were already on. The head on this Miller machine is able to pivot. There's two bolts in, two bolts in. You can tilt it that way, which is good for drilling angled holes. I'm going to use a fly cutter in the Miller machine. And when you use a fly cutter, it's important that the spindle in the machine is perfectly at 90 degrees to the bed of the machine that's called tramming the miller machine you have the phrase the miller machine needs tramming that's what i'm talking about it's adjustable quite easily that way and that way as i say it's got lock nuts on there you can adjust it that way what they call nod that's adjusted by putting as little, actually little bits of brass shim underneath there I did do that quite a while ago. That doesn't move. It's that one that can move. I'll show you how I set mine up, or at least how I check mine. Basically, I've got a dead gauge on there, showing zero. So all I do is turn it round to the other side, bring it down, and it's showing two thou. So this side here is two thou high. This side of the bench, in that position there is two thou higher. And it is there. We'll zero it again. Two fell. Right, I'll loosen these off, bump it around a bit, and see how accurate I can actually get it. tension on them. Right, the clock's on zero there. We'll simply take it round to the other side. This looks good. I'll leave the camera running so I can't cheat. Pretty point of cheating myself as I put. Right, and that's on zero. Right, so we'll settle for that. Just nip these up evenly. Right, and we'll check it again. Sure, nothing's moved. Zero. Zero. That's that'll be twelve inches. So within twelve inches, it's absolutely spot on. They're nice and tight. So now I can proceed. Put the fly cutter in, and fly cut the little block of steel. I'm gripping the parallels, everything's pushed down nice and tight. I need 15 thousandths off this, so what I'm going to do is touch it off and I'll take the 5 thou cut off this side, measure it, and then turn it over and take 10 off the other side. 
the reason why tramming is so important when you're using a fly cutter if you set this so it was just touching and the head was at a cant like that an angle like that it meant it would take a cut from here and then it would start cutting again on the back side that's not what you need hopefully when we take this cut here the job passes on another cutter and when the cutter is cutting on this side it should just be barely kissing it and not taking anything off at all and you will touch it off and take a, a light cut right, it's just touching there, you can hear it just touching from zero to the z-axis and then z-axis is on zero or in inches so we'll dial in five thou a little bit of loop Taking the fire throw off on the front of the cutter, when it comes out of the back of the cutter, it should just barely, which it is just barely kissing the job, which means that the, the trimming of the mill is right. You get a lovely finish with fly cutting. And they call it fly cutting because all the, the bits are cut off. Bastards fly everywhere. Right, I'll turn it over to take the other ten thou off. Taking the rags off the, the sides. That's three hundredths. That's three hundredths there. Slightly under. Three hundredths. Right, so we're happy with that. That's now three hundredths of an inch thick. I need to transfer those two outer holes onto there, and that's going to be held on with two five mil bolts. Easiest way to do it with a transfer punch. So put them up against there. So they're nicely, nicely lined up. Five mil transfer punch. Just gently. One. Two. Right, that's the two holes marked off. You could measure them and walk them out, but a transfer punch, it's transferred it, it can't be anything else other than right. I've got some nice little 5 mil counter sunk bolts, it'll do the job ideally. That's good. Right, I've screwed it on and I've just done you rub that on some memory tape on a surface plate just to take any rags off. That now drops on there. It should seem to be right on centre height and it can't move because it's sitting solid on the compound slide. I'll put a bit of bar on there and we'll give it a quick test. Okay, power feed. I don't normally part off the power feed, but that's not a 
be able to do that with that tool that's working fine now. With that. I've been going to do that for since I got the lathe really. So now, other than ensuring that the tool is square to the job, just in case of dropping it on, locking it up, and that is going nowhere. <laughs> 